All right, everybody, welcome back to Victoria to the Super Nations mod, episode two of our version 1.5 beta campaign as the American Confederation, which you won't don't see right now, but in a matter of seconds, you will. So, of course, let's go ahead and send this peace offer to the United States of America. Let's go ahead and proceed with that, and you will see the glory of the version 1.5 update. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, so anyways, um... United States of America. They have accepted our generous offer of peace to succeed from the United States of America. Fine. So, succession attained. So, the Civil War against all odds has been won by the Confederacy. Now comes the peace. The question now remains, what path shall we take? So, last episode I did explain each of these peace options briefly, but as you can see, this one is basically the normal event. Um, is that you can go ahead and win the war, gain a ton of prestige, and of course you uh, you can go into Mexico, do whatever you want as far as a normal playthrough. Um, you can build a wall if you want against the or on the U.S. Confederate border. This one, you change it to the American Confederated States, and so basically you become uh, the Union. You reconstitute the Union, but under the South, the head of the South. So basically, Richmond will be the capital. Um, and Dixie will be the primary culture, while Yankee is the accepted culture. So it's a little bit of a different little play around there. Um, you do gain prestige still, but you do get some rebellions in the north. Uh, people aren't exactly happy that the Union is no longer, well, under the northern um, head of the north. You know. Anyways, the third one is going to be the one we're going to go for, is actually doing the American Confederation playthrough. And so we're going to become Yankee at that accepted culture. Um, we do get a few modifiers, become the Confederate States of America, or we get the capital uh, of the American Confederation. And so that entire modifier gives us a assimilation rate, gives us an immigrant attraction, basically we're the gateway to the Confederation, so a lot of people do migrate through us. Um, we do gain a ton of prestige, and this is because we do lose out on a lot of other um, benefits. And so prestige is going to be our main point. Um, the constituent nations do not get any prestige, while we get prestige. And I use this as a great power um and just kind of i'm trying to think about a good way to really do that but it's the best way i have but we'll remain as the head of the, uh, the confederation as long as nobody becomes a great power which is the point um and so we do get that we do have all these nations will spawn in as you can kind of a little bit see um the other one is actually this one and so this united we shall be and so this one we actually make you this united states of america and as you can see we'll we'll do heck or play with that um later but once again like i mentioned last time if you guys are curious about playing this update go ahead and join my discord there is a link um to download the beta version the beta patch and you guys can go ahead and play it and just do some bug reports for me you can give some suggestions about what you would like to see happening in this update and i'll likely be releasing the official update within about a week or two um i'm gonna be on vacation this week in fact, later today I'm leaving um, to go to Vegas. We're gonna I'm gonna fly out with my girlfriend to Tennessee, so we're gonna do that, and that's be that's gonna be fun. Visit my brother, go to a Harry Styles concert. It'll be great. <laughs> Anyways, uh, let's go ahead and do the American Confederation option. Ooh, ooh, look at this guy. As you can already see it. As you get this pop up, there's nothing really to go around it. Um, do not extend slavery. We're gonna extend slavery. This is the American Confederation way. So there we go. Um, our color does end up changing to a bluish color. Um, think about maybe remaking or making this a little bit more gray. Um, closer to how the Confederacy was. Uh, you can see that Texas has a different color change. And this is one of the big mod features that you can see right now is that now there's a new government type called the Confederal, Confederal Republic. And so basically, obviously, you know what federalism is. Federalism is basically uh, centralizing all power of a nation into the state or the federal government, um, the capital region or whatever. Um, confederalism is basically centering all power in the constituent parts of the nation. So basically in the states. And uh, the South believed in, obviously, confederalism. Um, making sure all power are laid back into the states. So that's kind of what we're representing here. Um, there we go. Just tick today. And now we have no army. <laughs> we have no army. But our constituent nations do slash will. Um, some of them are undergoing elections currently. Most of them are, yeah. So like, for example, Madison is currently undergoing an election because they have no ideology. Same thing with Sioux, Columbus. 
So as a quick run through, we do have Bostonia as our northeastern uh, constituent state. We have Yorktown. We have Columbus. We have Appalachia. We have Lexington, uh, Carolina. We have Montgomery. We have Orleans. Uh, we have uh, Madison over here. We got Confederal Texas. We have the state of the plains. We have Sooks. 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 I don't know how to say that. Uh, Cascadia. We got the state of Deseret. And yeah, there's no California. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I might. If you guys want me to restructure some of this, I can do it um, as well. Let's go ahead and reopen this steamer yard. Um, taxes are still out the wazoo. Let's go ahead and decrease what we can. Perhaps increase taxes. Okay, there we go. Money is good. Money is good. Um, we can build an army. Four, two. Let's go ahead and build some artillery. Number three, great power. This will not last, obviously. This is not going to last. It's because we're starting at the... Um, whew, the 1861 start date. The thing's a little bit strange as far as the world stage goes, but... Uh, we didn't know who... Why? Nobody's choosing us. Oh, yeah. That's why. <laughs> Anyways, rise of the Confederation. So America has drastically shifted... Um, in its political system, and we have now truly embraced federalism. It should be confederalism. That's my bad. Uh, while many powers around the globe may now think us weaker, our strength has merely been hidden. So step into the article, let us attempt a new system of government. Uh, birth of a nation. So we get a bunch of fun stuffs. Oh, freak. We just lost a lot of those leadership points. So that's fine. We still have a lot of leaders. That's fine. Um, look, civil war troops. So the thing here is that there's not going to be a whole lot happening. All right, but we do have some decisions. Uh, we have the beacon of revolution. So as soon as we invent nationalism and imperialism, we can go ahead and declare war on uh, Mexico. So the northern states of Mexico had always been quite distant uh, from Mexican government. The Rio Grande, Sonora, is that going to take us? Now is the moment where we can inspire those revolutions. And so now we can go ahead and inspire revolutions over here in northern Mexico and actually um, constitute them as constituent states in the Union. The British is somewhat different because uh, post-war freedom. What? Let them stay free. Oh, yeah, right. So now that the war is over, the question uh, arises whether or not we should allow the slaves we enlisted during the war to remain free or send them back to work on the plantations. We've made a promise to secure their freedom, but wars are a fickle thing, and some sacrifices have to be made for the betterment of the nation. Uh, now we'll go ahead and, uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and make, let them be free. They can be free. We'll get the prestige. The juicy, juicy prestige. So now that we're smaller, we actually have money we can invest into these areas of our nation. Uh, that's 17,000. Can we actually make railroads? No, we can't. It's actually working. No. It's not working. It looks like it's working, but it's not. Okay. So, main goals of this playthrough is kind of test out some features of the mod. Um, obviously, we'll go into Mexico. We'll go ahead and free um, all the states up here in the north. And I crashed. I done crashed. Down below and consider subscribing. Anyways, uh, I'm going to reload the game, and we will jump back in. Yeah, that was unfortunate. Um, I've noticed that there are some crashes that tend to happen. I have no reason or no idea why, but it just does. But as soon as you reload the game, it's fine. So let's go ahead and jump in, and ideally things will not crash again. All right, guys, we are back um, in the autosave. I'm going to go ahead and make it so autosave interval is going to be monthly. Uh, just for a little bit, to make sure that we don't lose any progress if it does decide to crash again. I don't think it will. I think we'll be fine. Um, 
we don't have enough is intellectuals the good call probably because we do want clerks as well uh we don't we're not even getting any what am i doing what am i doing there we go um so yeah anyways we weren't even getting any literacy so how could we even expect to gain any intellectuals if we're not paying any intellectuals so that should help us as far as gaining intellectuals go so maybe that crash was a good thing um that's fine that is fine i think we crash in august right so we're already past that point so like i said crashes i mean i've had a crash every now and again i don't know what the issue is um i think if you do too many things too fast it just kind of like the system just kind of like uh, just stops working it just breaks um but typically it's fine so if it does crash in your game just just reload it's and ideally and hopefully you don't lose too much save progress um i don't think it's a mod thing it could maybe it is i don't know it could just be that victoria like by heavenly modding victoria 2 um obviously it's it's making changes and so you kind of have to be aware of that so i think i added literally twice as much data as the base game already has and so victoria 2 obviously doing all those calculations can be a little bit tough on the system and it does crash every now and again at least that's my reasoning um we are great power now great so let's go ahead and actually influence every single nation who is already in our uh in our thing our confederation uh everybody loves me they all love me just make sure that nobody else is influencing them Lexington, Columbus, Sioux, uh, Madison, Confederal Texas. So you've got lots and lots of constituent states. And like I said, ideally none of these guys do become a great power because we do get rid of uh, the prestige factor here. Um, but they can, of course, have factories still. So we never know, like in this start, um, a lot of these nations start out poorly they don't have a lot of war score and so it's kind of easy to actually overtake them and in the end game even it's not nearly as high as you would have if you were playing from the base game um oh, that's good so there are some differences you kind of have to be aware of so commerce do we keep trying to get make money if we do factory stuff steam turbine could be good make some money and obviously pay off our loans. Uh, none of that. Let's go ahead and just increase our naval bases. Might just want to focus on that a little bit. Because if we do want to colonize or play the colonial game in Africa, we want to be able to reach it. And we can't reach it as both right now. Because we don't have the, uh, the naval um, range for it. Um... Okay, Britain is trying to influence. Why, why am I, why am I influencing Abyssinia? Or Wolof? That's weird. That is strange. So, anyways, as you can see, as a capital of the American Confederation, you do get about four prestige or a prestige every four months. Uh, just one prestige point, not a ton. And if you are a member of the Confederation, you do lose prestige points every month. Which kind of keeps you down to below. So I don't expect anybody to have more than one or two prestige. They might get an event that increases it temporarily, but of course they will lose it very quickly as well. Um, that's just how the mechanics work in this situation. Shared prestige, great. If you want to look at the immigration map mode, we are getting immigrants. Um, not as much compared to some other states, apparently. There's not a whole lot of immigration happening at the moment, which is kind of why. But for a small nation, that much uh, immigration is actually helping us quite a bit. So, American Federation in Argentina. I will gain that place in the Sun Castle. I won't be able to do anything with it, but I'll gain it. I'd rather do that than lose anything. Um... Let's subsidize all of our factories. That'll help our industrial score a little bit. That's good. 
Okay, so... Anyways, as far as satellites go, they are obviously... Actually, I'm not sure. Do satellites automatically enter your market? I'm not sure that's a purely sphere of influence thing. So as soon as we get everybody in our sphere of influence, we should be good. Because our factories need resources. If we have nobody in our sphere of influence, they aren't on the same market. If they're not on the same market, then they're subject to tariffs. If they're subject to tariffs, then the price of the goods are higher. If the price of goods are higher, that means our factories are paying a lot more to get them in. And of course, they might lose money and things just aren't good. But if we do, if we do make sure that we are um, doing our best as far as getting already in our sphere, we can make sure everybody's on the common market. They're all in the common market. Um, it doesn't matter if they, if I'm the sphere leader, if they're a sphere member, they will get the same or share the same market goods as this, right? And uh, say the planes, for example, will share each other's market goods. And that'll help everybody grow their economy. And so for us right now, uh, getting goods into our factories is kind of expensive because we just don't have a lot of these base goods. But granted, I don't know if this being a satellite automatically qualifies you as being in part of uh, the sphere or part of the market. Okay, now everybody should be able to get increased. So I'm gonna do that. Yeah, let's see, increase opinion, increase opinion, increase opinion. This is gonna be a little bit interesting until we get everybody in our sphere. Carolina's already there and Bostonia, there we go. going up pretty quickly actually considering things but it's also partly because if you look at the modifiers because there are puppet we get an extra 100 percent uh yeah i don't your account's gonna like me anyways doesn't matter uh what else should we grab we could grab semi optimization uh functionalism will probably be good for us because we do want to make sure we get our literacy up as high as possible um so that's going to be pretty crucial on that front so we'll go to do that and okay, so Rupert's land is now free. Interesting. This is the Canadian area right here. And then this over here is uh, New Finland. Then we have Maritime Union. Apparently they're releasing all their nations. Okay. So that could be fun. Free them all and, and force them as part of our, our nation. Not force them. We're, we're, we're benevolent. We love states' rights. We don't force people to do anything. Uh, let's get Raider Group Doctrine. We're a friendly nation. Um, crisis. Takes capital from the UK. Acquire North Island. Why is this crisis even happening? The heck? Oh! What? Does that not start in the UK in 1960 or 1861? That's kind of interesting. That's probably an error. I bet. I bet these are new provinces and that's why. And so now there's that happening. Okay. Well, uh, this is going to be a war. Italy and Germany. Actually, maybe not. Their military power or score is not that high. And these guys are trying to support the United Kingdom. Uh, the UK might... Well, actually, no. I'm looking at the wrong score. 205, 131, 80. Never mind. It's about similar. I think we'll have to see what happens. Zooming through the years, guys. That's what we're going to be doing. Let's look at our constituent nations. So the, all these nations do have a lot of uh, troops. So that's good for us. We're getting most of them. Okay, who keeps blowing up my ships? Who keeps blowing them up? Uh, we do want to get Hawaii into our sphere. Ideally, to so annex them. It's not a mechanic where you release these nations. Um, it's kind of hard to predict how the player will interact as the American Confederation. We could make it a federal district, of course, and then roleplay that. Or, of course, just release them as a vassal satellite nation, which is also an option. If you want to keep with the realism of this. 
Uh, military coup d'etat in Argentina. So this is a war that they acquire Northern Ireland and they want to acquire French Antilles and admit hegemony. Okay, so we might see a Germany here. If they can take Alsace Lorraine as well. Add it. Add it, Germany. Acquire Venetia. Um, anyways, Carolina can go ahead and be friendly with us. So like I said, I think this might be a quick kind of a playthrough because not much is going to happen. Um, well, there will be stuff happening, but of course we're not controlling army specifically. So even in a war, we're largely going to be watching our vassals take control unless they're doing a crappy job, in which case we might command their units, but we'll see. Okay, so I'll let it tick over for a little bit until we get every single one of them doing that. Uh, we will go ahead and grab uh, a system of automation. And we can go ahead and get every single one of these naval bases improved. Works for me. Uh, let's go actually make our rally point here in Richmond. And we'll just kill in Richmond. And let's go ahead and actually get all these guys up to friendly. Uh, so let's do that. Oh, wonderful. Not Hawaii, not you yet. Columbus, uh, Cascadia, and Bostonia. Key making generals. I like doing that just because the uh, more leaders we have, the higher our military score goes. Nifty little thing. We are confederalists uh, who are pro-military. If you get jingoism, your military score goes even higher. If you get pacifism, your military score drops to zero, basically. Um, interesting little tidbit. If you're ever curious about why your military score might be low, make sure your uh, military policy is actually decent. Let's see, how is population density going? Looks like most people are on the East Coast. Uh, yeah, it's that one. Mm, full citizenship is fine. Um, I also, in this update, I kind of... Who do we actually want to go for? Is there anybody? State capitalism for the Socialist Party over here. Not planned economy. That's a bug. It should be planned economy. Or maybe, was it really? Maybe communism makes more sense as far as planned economy. Maybe socialist wouldn't be planned economy, but maybe state capitalism, which might make sense. As a system of government. Um, we can't build factories. And we probably want to. It kind of goes against the whole role play thing to even do that though in the first place. Um, but we're going to go for... Radical Restorationist, I think. Um, reactionary would be better though. I like Reactionary. But it ain't going to win. Well, it can win. If we want to... Uh, focus on that but we also get we lose out on a lot of the social policies because uh, reactionaries never never support a uh, political reform or social reform never so it's good to keep that in mind and we likely won't be getting um ooh, let the bay take its course uh, we likely won't be getting alaska unfortunately Oh yeah, quarantine the province. I'm trying to think what the best way to or approach this series would be. Would it be to do time lapses unless something is happening or interesting happening or just doing a 
time lapse almost the entire playthrough because there really isn't going to be a whole lot interesting going to happen, I don't think. Ooh, this is a good tech. Let's get that. Uh, I'm going to throw that out there right now. There might be a lot of sitting around. Ooh, we can actually... Let's do that. Let's just, you know, throw some points into our uh, satellite nations. I mean, it might inversely increase our military score, but that's fine. It increases ours. Look at this. See, the planes is 1.844. Increases our uh, military score. Or not military, industrial score. So now we're at 28. It's getting there. Carolina's already at 76. How's that war going? Did it end? Looks like it did end. With Germany having complete control, they will likely go to war with against France uh, sometime soon. for them. Hmm. Okay. Anyways. So we're going to get like 800. There's not a whole lot of immigration happening. It does increase later in the game. I will say that right now. Uh, as of right now, there's a, a whole lot going on though. Are they... The Shogunate... Okay, they are westernized. Uh, let's do... Maybe some commerce techs. Get factory output efficiency. Which is huge. It increases the total amount of goods that end up being produced after the fact... If you look at your factories, for example, it's a hard increase on how much this produces. Um, which is good because it doesn't change how much you have to put in there at all. Throughput does. Throughput just makes your total amount. So your factories can produce more in general because it takes in more resources. It's like it's a capabilities produce like max goods or mass produces is, is a lot higher. But output efficiency is, is very good. It's a little bit better. Hawaii. Let's go ahead and put you into, was it cordial? Yeah, there we go. And Carolina, you, my friend, are now in our sphere. And our economy will probably increase as well as that happens. Um, just because. Naval bump mode. Works for me. Now we're dropping down to level or number four. I think we'll, we'll obviously stay in the great power status, I think, pretty much most of the game. Um, I don't envision us dropping, especially as we get more and more immigration. And hopefully no, they don't actually become great powers, because that is going to be a, a doozy if we have to go ahead and declare war on them, just because they have human great power. Uh, let's go for... Ooh, some of these are good. Wait. Yep, analytical philosophy. Let's go ahead for that. Um, prioritize that. Just because that's a hard increase on our tech, which in the long run helps us a lot more than it wouldn't. Than otherwise. Is that Canada? Ooh, there we go. A lot of prestige. Um, Canada. Now, making them a member of the Confederation can be a little bit tricky. They are large, but they are also, well, not very populated. So we could make them a member of the Confederation and still be fine. Um, but yeah, anyways. 
That's a sphere. My only worry is that eventually Canada could be... I don't think it would become a great power, though. I've never seen Canada become a great power. Become a secondary power, yes. A great power, not so much. And so I think we might actually be fine. Alright, so now we have Columbus and Bostonia over here. There we go. And now we all we have is Appalachia. And, uh... Wait, have we not been influencing them this entire time? Nope, apparently not. <laughs> oh, that's my bad. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, uh... Decrease a lot of this. So, unless you're Yorktown... Uh, if you're already in my sphere... I'm going to decrease you to one. So we'll still be influencing you, just not as much as the others. And now that they're my sphere, I am not making any more money, but that's fine. I'm thinking about switching from intellectuals over to... Yeah, so let's go ahead and focus in on our factories now. Uh, you switch over to Craftsman. And let's go ahead and see what we got here in Virginia. So we got tobacco. We have no good trade goods, do we? Just tobacco. <laughs> oh, this is good. Oh, we can't actually build anything anyways. Um... Expand, Bill. Let's just do this. I don't think we even have any uh, capitalist. So let's just we'll fund it ourselves. Uh, we will go ahead and expand whatever is being profitable. So not the steel factory and not the luxury clothes factory. So paper goods, you're you're being expanded, and steamer convoys. Latvia. What's going on, Russia? Okay, okay. We might... We're probably seeing a second war. And they're going to go for it again. Okay, well... I think we'll see another victory. Potentially. Unless uh, France pulls something. It looks like Italy is doing good. We can't produce two more units. Um, what units do we want them to be for? I think... Let's keep that five. Let's make a... Let's make an engineer and a chicken. Okay, they actually accepted that peace offer. So now we have a Latvia. And Russia is going to be losing prestige. Alright, now that we have this. Uh, Steel Railroad. I want to get some railroads. I think we can build railroads, right? Yeah, we can build railroads. We just don't have the tech for it. These are already at level 3. Um, let's do... Oof. Pensions. Okay, Appalachian War. Yorktown. Good. Okay, so they have 42 brigades. 3, 0, Ooh, Hawaii. But these guys all have pretty good brigades. My numbers. I think Yorktown has 22. 22 Columbus. We got another 24 over in Bostonia. They all um, will likely mobilize as well. So I think we'd actually be able to see a pretty quick and uh, easy war here. If we do go to war against uh, Mexico. So after Steel Railroad, we'll go ahead and move over to Nationalism and Imperialism. So we can get that little benefit. Get those states um, joining the Confederation. The sooner they join the Confederation, the better. And 
Appalachia. You are good to go ahead and be friendly. Same thing. Not with Yorktown, though. They're still waiting. See, the reason why I'm assuming Russia hasn't sale or sold, uh, sold, sorry, um, Alaska to Britain yet is because they've been going to war. They're probably not in very good terms. Um, I was going to do this. Oops, got to click it first. And now we have Steel Railroad. Now, there's something I actually figured out recently. Apparently, if you uh, can, or are, are, what? That's not how you do it. How was it? It was, um, let me figure that out really quick. I'll be right back. All right, never mind, guys. Apparently, the hotkey for building railroads is also somehow tied to the diplomatic. So if you click R, you get the diplomatic map mode. And that's it. You can't actually click R and, and build a and build a railroad. Uh, so that's fine. Let's go to keep clicking. It would have been nice had that actually worked because then you could just click and just hotkey it. So you just go. Uh, maybe there's a way to fix it. I don't know. But the hotkey apparently is not tied exclusively to railroad, which is why it doesn't work. I was looking at the hotkeys recently because I was like, oh, that seems interesting. And there are a few hot or interesting hotkeys I did find. I'll obviously, click the F1s, F2, F3, F4. It corresponds to the screen on the top of the of the map. And of course, if you look in like your keys, you can switch through each map mode. Um, yeah. And obviously, F12 will screenshot the entire game. And Shift F12 is a a screenshot of just not screenshot. It's like a world view map type of thing. Um, anyways, Yorktown. Hopefully Victoria 3 will have some better features as far as that goes. So 62.2%. We're doing great as far as that goes. Um, those are our most profitable factories. Yorktown has a, or Bostonia has a lot of uh, of industry going here. Because, well, they only control this part of New York. But apparently that's a, a still sizable amount. Massachusetts, though, down here. That's where all the all those goods are coming from. Okay, so Trinket Healthcare is what we're going to go for. Um, it's the best option, just because we get that douchey, uh, population growth. Um, well, I'm thinking about doing some point soon. Obviously, I think I talked about this in the last playthrough as well, is I want to switch this whole pop to, or like this screen over to what the pop demand mod has. I just got to figure out how to do that, but I don't think it's too difficult to do. Just got to change all the interfaces and stuff. Okay, so... Valley of the Kings will grab that. They will get us. There we go. Glad, glad. Um, Archaeological Museum. We'll take it. And as far as everything else goes... Um, throughput and fa factory cost is actually pretty good for us if we want to get that. Um, direct taxation could be better. Perhaps to pull influence. Uh, we will take not that. Where are these nations at? So you are still friendly. Hawaii is friendly. All of them are friendly. I'm going to wait till they're in our sphere before we actually go to war against Mexico. Which is soon. Uh, low health care. That's good for me. Keep that pop growth coming. That's where a lot of our benefits are going to come from. As, as long as we have a large population, we will be good. Philadelphia is a lot more populous, though. Okay, so Appalachia. Let's go ahead and add them to our sphere.
And let's do output efficiency over here for time saving measures. Oh my, that actually is a lot of, that's expensive. Good. Okay, cool. Um, keep that population growth coming. And make sure these probably need to get the next level of naval bases. Uh, we want to... It's almost 1880. Yeah, so we definitely need to get that because we are not close enough for this. We need one more naval base level to reach it. I'm actually slightly concerned because we have to obviously research the tech and then we have to be able to build it. All right, Yorktown, Atmosphere. Great, and now we have Hawaii. And there we go. At Hawaii, take you in. And we'll be able to actually annex them until we get uh, Revolution Counter Revolution. But now everybody's in our sphere. Could try adding Canada to our sphere too. We have 1.03 million. And there we go. So let's go ahead and research, obviously, Blue and Brown Water School. That will be researched by 1876. We'll see about that. Anyways, we're going to end this episode here. Uh, American Confederation is a thing. Yay. Um, and then we're going to move into Mexico uh, beginning of the next episode and continue to expand the Confederation. So anyways, thank you guys all for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye. As always, please leave a like down below and consider subscribing if you would like to see more content just like this and more frequent uploads. If you have any suggestions, go ahead and leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys next time.